One of the coolest things in the universe is a Type 1A supernova. It has a very special set of requirements. Basically, you have a binary pair, one big star and then a white dwarf core. The white dwarf core will slowly steal material from the other star until it reaches a critical mass and then boom, no more stars. What is special about them is that the mass in the explosion is always the same as it is just the mass of the white dwarf star. This means that it always has the same absolute brightness, which means that the only factor is distance from us to how bright it is. This is how we can tell about the universe expansion. Okay, so we'll come back to the type 1 supernova in a bit, but first we need to talk about matter, and what we've come to realise is that the universe is only 4% ordinary matter. Matter like you and me and your computer and the earth, etc. But about 26% of the universe is invisible matter. Invisible in the sense that it doesn't emit light, so we can't see it, and it doesn't absorb light, and so we can't see it through absence. It doesn't seem to interact with light at all. So the question is, how do we know it's even there? And we know it's there because it's big and it's heavy, and big and heavy things tend to have more gravity than small things, and so like black holes, we can see the effects it has on the objects around it. In fact, this invisible matter has so much gravity that it dominates the universe on a large scale. This invisible matter is called dark matter. Now we also have the rest of my lovely pie chart here to fill in, and the rest is completely filled with dark energy, but I'll talk about that in a sec. So we know how gravity works. Looking at our solar system, the closer you are to the bigger object, the faster you orbit. Like Mercury and Neptune, there is a huge difference in speed between them, there's a huge difference in year length because of this. So what you would assume is that this situation could be scaled up to a galaxy as well, so that stars closer to the centre where most of the mass is will rotate quicker around the galaxy than stars on the outside. It's a simple enough concept. So what we have done is we've measured the speed of stars on the outside compared to the stars in the middle, and what we could expect is this graph. As we get further away, the speed decreases, but what we actually find is that the speed is almost constant. What it suggests is that the stars on the outside are feeling the gravitational effects of mass that we can't even see, or they would have gone slower. So what seems to be going on is that every galaxy seems to be swamped with this invisible dark matter kind of like a cloud around it. And it seems like this cloud of dark matter is far more spherical than the galaxy itself, where most galaxies seem to have big long spirally arms and stretched out. It also has a much bigger radius than the galaxy. It is literally a huge cloud of dark matter. Now galaxies aren't just flying around randomly, they tend to try and group together. For example, us and the Andromeda Galaxy are getting quite friendly with each other, and it looks like we're probably going to move in. For another example, the Coma Cluster is a huge cluster of galaxies. To us, they don't look like they're moving, but they are actually moving at incredible speeds around each other. So we measure the speed, and what we can see is that they're moving way too quick. They should be far more mass in that area than what we can actually see. In fact, there should be 10 times more mass than what we can see. Okay, so... Here's where things are going to get far more interesting. So when I said we can see it by the effects that it has on the objects around it, this is actually true, we can. And what we look for is a thing called gravitational lensing. Consider this. We have a galaxy A here, and your eye here. To see the galaxy, light must travel from the galaxy into your eye. But if we put a cluster here, and not forgetting its dark matter ring around it, and see what happens to the light. We can't go through the cluster, as otherwise the light will just be lost. But Einstein predicted that the objects with enormous gravity can actually bend photons as well as particles with mass. Considering this, what if there was a photon coming out like this? it could bend round into your eye, but if we tracked it back from your eye, it would look like the galaxy is higher than it is. This also happens for a photon going down too. In fact, it happens in all directions. And what we end up with is a ring, so the light distorts itself around the cluster. 
To get a perfect ring, it relies on the galaxy, the cluster and your eye all being in a perfect line. So if it isn't, it won't form a ring, but sort of a partial ring. And here, I have a picture of this. Notice how these lines are not going round one galaxy, but the galaxy as a whole around the dark matter. This is the closest we can actually come to seeing dark matter, and so the hunt is on to actually capture it, but that has its own issues. There are many different ideas about how we could detect this. There is an old iron mine in Minnesota which has built the most sensitive particle detector to try and find dark matter. The reason they're using a mine is because space is filled with so much clutter, and going underground will filter out a lot of this clutter. So what they need for the sensor is a crystal that will ring out if it's hit by dark matter. Except the problem is that dark matter doesn't want to interact with anything. It will just pass through without even leaving a trace. There is a satellite in orbit which is actually looking towards the middle of the galaxy trying to find dark matter particles colliding and annihilating each other, which would produce some sort of gamma radiation. Hopefully. The Large Hadron Collider will turn on sometime this year and is, and is going to try and find some after a massive revamp of equipment. Now the trick here is that dark matter particles should escape detection, but what we are looking for is missing energy, except there are a lot of unknown particles in physics which we are looking for via missing energy. Then in the future, there are many telescopes and satellites that are being designed specifically for the detection of dark matter and dark energy. Turning to dark energy, here is the thing. The expansion of space is a tricky thing to explain. What it looks like is that galaxies are moving away from each other, when in reality, it is the space between them that is expanding. I know it kind of sounds stupid, like it's the same thing, but I kind of guess like it's blowing up a balloon. If you have point A and point B here, and as you blow it up, the actual surface of the balloon is being stretched. This is just like space-time is being stretched out. Now the quirk about this is if there is matter present, matter which causes gravity, it will slow down this expansion. So in the last century, people debated whether it was going to lead to the universe slowing down, stopping and then finally contracting in on itself. So about a decade ago, two sets of scientists set out to have a look about how much the universe expansion is slowing down. To do this, they needed to find distances in space. So what they looked for is referred to as a standard candle. There are objects that give off a certain known amount of light. Because we know how bright these objects are, we can work out their distances by analysing how dim they appear to us. Imagine an example. You are stood on a street which is lined with street lights. According to the inverse square law, the second street light will appear four times dimmer than the first, the third will then be nine times dimmer. So by judging how bright it is, we can easily guess their distances. So for short distances, in a cosmological sense, they use a special type of star which acts as a standard candle. These stars actually pulse and their brightness is directly related to the amount of time between pulses. The problem with this is, for objects far away, you need something that is brighter. So before I talked about the Type 1a supernova, and these are the standard candles of really far distances. Now the exact mass required for a Type 1a supernova is 1.4 solar masses, at which it goes nuclear and blows up. So scientists can just compare the differences in brightness to compare the distances. And what they found is really interesting. The answer they were looking for turned out to be negative. That means that deceleration is negative, which actually means that it is accelerating. And it is actually expanding faster than it was a billion years ago. Now in the mathematics, it has its own term. It's an energy which causes space to expand at a faster rate, and they call this dark energy. Except, we don't really want it there, it's unexplained and we're not comfortable with this idea. We just don't like it. One explanation for dark energy is that it's just a property of space. Albert Einstein realised that empty space is not empty, far from it in fact. Space itself has some interesting properties which includes this idea of creating more space. Einstein called this his cosmological constant, however he disbanded the idea after calling it his biggest blunder except it seems to be pretty close to what we think now. Amazing, really. Another idea about dark energy is that it's a new kind of dynamical energy, fluid, or field. 
Like water will fill a container that it's in, dark energy will fill the space that it's in, and then it will force the container to get bigger as it overflows. Another idea that Einstein's theory of gravity is wrong and that the new theory needs to be formed around dark energy, but of course this is all just speculation. The formula E equals mc squared tells us that matter and energy are very interchangeable, merely different forms of the same thing. Like our sun that survives on converting matter into energy. But the thing about energy is that it's meant to have a source, either matter or radiation, but dark energy is like the energy of space. It has a notion that if we have space that is devoid of all matter and radiation, there is still a residual energy, aka dark energy. It could be that dark energy creates a new fundamental force in the universe that only takes effect after it reaches a certain size. Scientific theories allow for this possibility of such forces, or it could happen as a very temporary force that eventually disappears and then the universe slows and stops, but this is just grasping at ideas. So if it isn't clear by now, dark matter and dark energy are totally different things, and they have very different effects. Like dark matter has a huge impact on gravity. Galaxies will form where there is large amounts of dark matter because of its such gravitational attraction. Whereas dark energy hates gravity, it causes space-time to expand so gravity will have less pullover objects. This means that it will slow the growth of structure and order in the universe. There are different ideas also about what dark energy will actually do. It could cause a big rip in which galaxies, stars and even atoms are ripped apart by the energy. Or it could fade away and result in a big crunch in which we all get crushed into a tiny dot. Although the second one seems less likely than it used to. So the big question is in physics, what is dark matter and what is dark energy? This is one of them things that will give you a Nobel Prize if you find it. So. Best of luck, your time starts now. Just a thanks for watching and I hope this video helped. Now you can go annoy everyone else with how smart you are. Till next time, bye.